Being on a spiritual path, it's very important to accept and manage your ego instead of denying and killing it because that would be both foolish and almost impossible. Obviously, the end result will be no ego, but that would not be because the ego has been killed. False identity of self merges into the true identity of self. It is because of the wisdom. Now I know who I am. I identify myself with who I truly am. Instead of having a false, ignorant, limited, old, pattern-based, limited, and so forth identification of and with self or who am I answer. Is the river merging with the ocean. The river doesn't die. It ends its journey. It becomes part of the ocean. It's part of the cycle. It has to just go back to it. But until the river merges in the ocean, the river and its existence has to be managed. It has to be kept within the two banks of the river. It cannot break free from it. It has a name. It has a form. It has a flow. When the river overflows or the river is flooded or the banks of the rivers are broken, it causes flooding or nuisance. And if there is a blockage of the river, it doesn't end up going anywhere, then it becomes stagnant and stinky. All of us have an ego. I'm wearing clothes. I'm not being my baby self. Some things I can learn from being a baby, which means I want what I want when I want, not in a petulant way, but realizing what my needs are. Just the way a baby realizes it needs to be cleaned, it needs to be fed, it wants to play, and it wants to sleep, and it doesn't feel ashamed or stop itself or judge itself when it has those needs. We are the ones who have to take care of that ego self. We have to recognize it. It's not a bad thing. It's my resume. It's my personality. My ego cannot and should not step on other people's egos. My ego should not bother other people's egos. It should not belittle other people's egos. My ego does not need to become so small that it's like I am not good enough as the other people's ego. I wish my ego was as big as theirs. The feeling of envy, jealousy, anger, etc. comes from the comparative between my ego and someone else's ego, which is completely unnecessary. And also the case of hungry, unfed ego, unmanaged ego. Because I'm not giving my ego what it needs, and then it expects, or I expect, my ego to be taken care of by other people. Since I don't recognize my ego, I don't give recognition to my own self, then I seek recognition from others. I need to satisfy my own ego. Baby doesn't have an ego. Baby doesn't even know its name. Baby doesn't even have an identity. Baby has no judgment, no blockages, until we start imposing those restrictions on it. I'm not saying all people should be walking on the street without diapers. That's not what I'm saying. There's something to be learned about managing ourselves. So I wear the clothes that I feel fit my personality. They could be simple, they could be flamboyant, they could be plain, or they could be colorful. Whatever it is that fits your personality. That personality is part of the ego complex. Am I giving myself what I want? Oftentimes these ego things they stay under the radar because I don't want to look bad in the eyes of people. I don't want other people to think I'm egotist, so we hide our ego. You can't hide it. You can hide it, but you can't really hide it. Because the energy that will be required to hide it, 
will take away from you being yourself. At the very minimum, give it what it needs from a superficial level to accomplishments, to recognition, to fulfillment of desires, to giving it the experiences it needs. And some of this will say, well, isn't it? I'm satisfying my heart. Yes, but you're also satisfying your ego also. Is it also satisfying my soul? Yes, but you're also satisfying your ego. Satisfy yourself. It's basically saying, I love me in so many different ways. God, that was such a good salad I made. I love it. You know something? No one can make such a good chai as I make for myself. I'm not saying I make the best chai in the world. I say I make the best chai for me in this world. No one makes a better chai than me in this world to my taste. That is satisfying my ego. I'm, I'm not expecting other people to make the chai that I want for me. I make it for myself. That's called satisfying my ego. You have to define what that means to yourself in terms of your life experiences. What do I think about myself? What do I feel about myself? What am I doing in my life to satisfy both my ego and the purpose of my life? You see, ego is not a separate thing. Ego, mind, heart, life experiences, senses, body, soul, they're all interconnected. It's part of one whole me that defines me. When I'm satisfying in a very satisfactory, wholesome way, <laughs> any part of me, it will fuel, it will support, it will irrigate, it will satisfy other related parts of me. Sometimes the service or seva is done to show, look how good I am. I'm a good person. I'm doing seva. The ego wants to be satisfied. Give it the recognition. Fine. I'm doing seva to satisfy my ego. And I'm doing seva to satisfy my mind. Am I doing seva? And I'm also doing seva to satisfy my soul. It is like that. It's not necessarily one or the other. And all of this comes through self-awareness. The self-awareness becomes more clear over time. It becomes, as I become more pure... Pure means what? Pure means as I become more of myself. As I become my own self, that is purity. Anything that is not me, I get rid of it, no matter how good it is or bad it is. I no longer am attached to things that are not me. I release with ease. None of this conversation will matter because if the river merges in the ocean, the river no longer exists and the questioning of who am I would not also exist. It has become the ocean. So till the end of this journey, of this self, of me, till the end of my journey, I take care of me. Because if I don't, then I will expect somebody else to take care of me and then I'll become a burden on them. I love me.